Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Now we are studying the effects of the cross and what Jesus did for us. We already saw that Jesus gave us the victory. We are made free. We have victory over death. And yesterday we began studying the resurrection life and the resurrection power of God that is in us right now, right now. Glory to God. Now we saw in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that everlasting life is the Greek word zoe, Z-O-E, and it means the life of God. It is also the resurrection life of God. Romans 6, 5. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. Remember a couple weeks ago, we studied the substitution and identification. Jesus was our substitute. We identify with him in his death and in his resurrection and in his exaltation. Glory to God. So we are united with him. In his resurrection. Also Romans 6.23 says. But the gift of God. Is eternal life. That is Zoe life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. We have Zoe. Resurrection life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. And Romans 8.11. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Dwell in you. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Will also quicken give life. Resurrection life. To your mortal body. The resurrection life. Is in you. It's in your spirit. And in your body. Hallelujah. You don't have to wait. Till you go to heaven. You have it. Now when you're born again. Also. 2 Corinthians 4.10. 2 Corinthians 4.10 says, We also carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. This again is a perfect scripture to show substitution and identification. Jesus was our substitute. He died for us, but we identify with him in his death. So it says we also carry around in our body the death of Jesus. Why? So that we can identify in his resurrection. We identify with him in his resurrection so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. You see, we must have the life of Jesus revealed in our body. So we saw yesterday, resurrection power is in us now. It is not something that we will just get later when Jesus comes and resurrects all the dead. No, resurrection power is something we already have that we received when we were born again. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that took him from the depths of hell and raised him to the highest high Overcoming all the power of darkness, that same resurrection life and resurrection power is inside of you right now. Hallelujah. And that's what we saw in Ephesians 1, 17 to 21. And we saw that in verse 17, he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. That's what I'm praying for you and me, that we would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's something you should ask for every day. You should ask for that every day. Lord, father, God, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that I may know you better knowing you better know who I am helps me to know who I am in Christ better to know who I am what I have in Christ glory to God verse 18 Ephesians 1 18 I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order see there's more enlightenment more revelation understanding that we pray for in order that you may know and then he names three things that you may know number one that you may know the hope to which he has called you or the hope of your calling we pray you know the hope of your calling number two that you may know the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and number three that you may know his incomparably great power for us who believe for us 
who believe. Hallelujah. You see, and I asked yesterday, what was the greatest exercise, the greatest working of God's power? Was it when he created the heavens and the earth? Was it when he parted the Red Sea? Was it when he raised the dead? No, it was when he raised Christ from the dead, when he raised him from the lowest depths of hell and seated him at the highest place in the heavenly realms, because Not only did he take him from the lowest low to the highest high, but he also had to overcome all the powers of darkness. So we see in verse 19 that you may know his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above, far, 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 far above all rule and authority. You see, the devil is low, 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 down, 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 down in the lowest place. Jesus is in the highest place, the highest of the high glory to God. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Hallelujah. That is the power of God that we may know this incomparably great power for us who believed the same power that raised Jesus from the dead and from the lowest depths and seated him in the highest place in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. So you see, this is the resurrection power, the resurrection life of God that raised Jesus from the dead. This resurrection power is in us right now. That resurrection power is the same power that gave us new birth. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, raised your spirit from the dead. Your spirit was dead, just like Jesus spirit was dead. What does that mean? What does dead mean? Separation from the source of life. Your spirit was separated from God. Jesus was separated from the father when he was in hell. We were dead spiritually separated from God, dead in sin. But the resurrection power that went into the depths of hell to raise Jesus spirit from the dead is the very same resurrection power that goes into you, into your spirit and raises your spirit from the dead and gives you new birth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now, just like Jesus, you are already resurrected from the dead. You are already resurrected right now from the dead. And that resurrection power goes into your spirit and raises your spirit from the dead. But as we saw in Romans 8, 11, it also quickens, gives life to your mortal body. And Second Corinthians 4, 10, it may also be revealed in your body. So the resurrection life and resurrection power of God goes into your spirit, gives your spirit new birth and resurrection life, but it also enters into your body to quicken, give life to your mortal body to be revealed in your body. You see, that's what Peter understood in Acts chapter three, when Peter and John went to the uh, temple And they were at the beautiful gate and they saw the crippled man who had been crippled from birth. And Peter said to him, silver and gold, I do not have. But what I have, I have, I give you. He knew he had resurrection power. He knew he had it right now. And so he said, what I have, I give you. I give you that resurrection power to be more revealed in your mortal body. Now, in the name of Jesus, arise. In the name of Jesus, arise and get up. That same resurrection power, that is the healing power. That is the power that heals every sickness and disease. That is the power that makes the crippled and the lame to walk. That is the power that makes the blind to see, the deaf to hear. That is the power that creates new arms, new legs, new body parts. It is resurrection Power, resurrection, life, the Zoe life of God. It is available to us and it is in us right now when we are born again. Glory to God. We need to get this revelation because it will change the way we think 
and it will change the way we live. I challenge you, meditate on this today. Meditate on this every day. Resurrection life is in you because it will change the way we think and the way we live. As I said yesterday, many Christians are all are asking God, oh God, please help me. Oh God, send the power. Oh God, give us the power. He already did. He already did. The power is in you. Resurrection power is inside of you. You don't need to ask for it. You need to believe it. You need to believe in the power of God that is inside of you. We must come to learn to uh, to know, to understand what is inside of us right now because it's there. The key is learning these Things We must know this. And the key is obedience and faith. These are the things that will draw from the power that is in us. The power of God lives in you because God is in you. So everywhere you go, God goes. His power, his wisdom, his knowledge is inside of you. His joy is inside of you. His peace is inside of you. All that God is is inside of you because God is inside of you. You don't have to ask for it. It's in there. You must believe in it. You must believe it. You must know it, understand it, and believe it. Glory to God. It's there. Faith draws on the power. And as I said yesterday, also obedience, faith and obedience. These are two major keys to receiving anything from God, because in disobedience, you cannot receive from God. When you are not doing his will, you are cutting off his supply. You cut off his supply. But when you are in obedience, when you are listening and obeying, listening and obeying, listening and obeying every day, you qualify. You qualify and you continually have access to God and to all that God has. It's in you and faith draws it up. The power is in you. Let me share a story with you and a testimony. There was a man of God, a man of God whose granddaughter was um, struck with spinal meningitis, spinal meningitis, 12 years old. One morning, Christmas morning. Several years ago, she is now a grown woman, but several years ago, when she was 12 years old, on Christmas morning, she woke up and she was sick, very sick. She was delirious, out of her mind. Her parents found her. They rushed her to the hospital and the doctors took a spinal tap of the spinal fluid and they said, we have never seen Such cloudy spinal fluid. This is the worst case we have ever seen. And the doctor said the next 24 hours will determine whether she lives or dies. Now the mother had to take control over her emotions. She had new faith and she gritted her teeth and she said, I refuse to fear. She took authority over the spirit of fear. And then the whole family together took communion Believing in that resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And then this man of God, this minister, when he entered his granddaughter's room, and this was hours later because he was in another part of the uh, country and he had to cross the country to come to her. So when he arrived that evening, that evening, he entered the girl's room and he was asking God, what should he say? What should he say? Because he knows the words of power that come out of his mouth is going to do determine the result of what is going to happen in this situation. And so he's asking God, God, what do I say? What do I say? And he told him exactly the words to say. And he went to this little girl and he went to her bed and he put his index finger on her chest bone. And he said, in the name of Jesus, Lindsay, I command you. No, he said, Lindsay, I command the anointing that is in you to rise up. You see, he said, in the name of Jesus, Lindsay, I command the anointing, the anointing that is in you to rise up. Now, this girl, she was born again. She was raised in the minister's family. All of them, the kids, grandkids, they all knew and practiced faith. She knew how to believe God. 
for her healing. But from the morning till this moment, she had been unconscious. She had not opened her eyes. She had not spoken a word intelligibly, intelligently, I mean, intelligently to anyone. She had been in a coma all day. In the morning, she was delirious, and then she went into this coma. When he spoke those words, she had been in a coma, and he said, I command the anointing that is in you to rise up. Now, she was only 12 years old. Immediately, she opened her eyes. She opened her eyes. She gritted her teeth, and she looked at her grandpa, and she said, Papa, I'm healed. Now, the 12-year-old girl said that because she knew faith. But notice, he called for the power, the resurrection power. That is the anointing, the resurrection power that was inside of her because she was born again. She was only 12 years old, only 12 years old, but she was born again. So the resurrection power was already in her. He called for it. He called and said, I command the anointing that is in you to rise up. She immediately opened her eyes. Within 24 hours, she went home from the hospital. Now the doctor said, if she survives, if she lives, She'll have some serious handicap for the rest of her life. No child is ever left without some um, disability after they have had this disease. And hers was the worst, if she even lives. She immediately opened her eyes within 24 hours that they released her from the hospital. She did have loss of hearing in one ear. Loss of hearing. Well, this little 12-year-old girl, girl of faith... Whenever she would answer the telephone, she put it to the ear that could not hear. Not to the ear that could hear, but the ear that could not hear, believing she was healed. Saying, I'm healed. My ear is healed. Healed. My hearing is healed. With six, within six months, she went to the doctor, had her hearing tested, and her hearing was perfect. Because she believed in the healing power of God. But I want you to see, what I want you to see as, is that... Even in a 12-year-old child who is born again, the resurrection power is there. The power is in there when you're born again. So the resurrection power of God is already inside of you if you're born again. Even if you just got born again yesterday, even if you just got born again five minutes ago, the resurrection power of God is now residing, dwelling, abiding inside of you. That resurrection power has already given new birth to your body, I mean to your spirit, to your spirit, and it is now to work out in your body. Glory to God. All the power you need is inside of you. You need to learn how to receive that power, how to draw on it, how to draw it into your everyday life and into every situation. Speak the anointing. Speak resurrection life into situations that are dead. Speak resurrection life into your body. Remember, I said taking the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Speak the word into your body. Speak the word into your finances. Speak the word into your marriage. You may think that your marriage is dead. No, resurrection life can resurrect your marriage. Resurrection life can resurrect your marriage. Speak the life of God. Speak life and not death. Speak healing and not death in the name of Jesus. It is in you. That res- that's also a revelation of how you can pray for other people. Other people who are born again, if they are sick or dying, you can pray the same thing. You can call for that anointing, that resurrection power that is in them, if they're born again, to rise up. Just like this man of God spoke to that 12-year-old girl and called on the resurrection power to rise in her, and it did. She immediately opened her eyes. Now, I encourage you, and I challenge you right now, and I challenge you all day today, wherever you go, whatever you're doing, 
continually say, the resurrection power of God is in me. Resurrection power is in me. Resurrection power is in me. Say it 10,000 times today. Say it right now. The resurrection power of God is inside of me. Resurrection power is inside of me. Resurrection power is in me. Practice it every day. Get a revelation of it. It will change your life. It will change your body. It will change your finances. It will change your marriage. It will change your your children. It will change your family. It will change your job and your work environment. You carry the resurrection power just like Peter did when Peter said to that crippled man in Acts 3, what I do not have silver and gold, but what I have, I give you what I have, what I have, I give you. I have resurrection power. Now you get up, arise right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As you meditate on it, as you say it every day, say it 10,000 times a day, you'll get a revelation of it. And then you'll begin walking in the resurrection life and the resurrection power of God that is available to you right now, today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Get the revelation of the resurrection power of God that is in you. Walk in it. Speak it. Speak life into every situation. Don't speak death. Speak life. Speak healing into your body. Speak life into your stomach, your back, your kidney, your elbow, your knee, whatever it is that you need, wherever you need resurrection life to work in you. You speak life into it. Command it to live. Command it to arise in the power of God in Jesus name and speak life into your finances and command those finances to live, to be fruitful and multiply, to rise up and to grow and to increase and to be blessed, prosperous and fruitful in the name of Jesus. Speak life into your marriage. Speak life into your husband or your wife. If there is any situation of of difficulty there, you speak words of life and resurrection power into that. Speak life and resurrection into your children. Speak life into them. Even if they're on drugs, even if they're running from God, you speak resurrection power and life in them and they shall be resurrected from spiritual death into spiritual life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I right now command the resurrection power and the resurrection life of Jesus, the life that you exerted, Father God, when you raised Christ from the dead, from the lowest place, and you exalted him to the highest place at the right hand of God. I command that resurrection power to go into everybody that is listening to me right now in Jesus name. I command that resurrection power to go into their mind, into their emotions. I command that resurrection power to go into their bodies. I command that resurrection power go into their finances. I command that resurrection power go into their marriages. I command marriages to be resurrected from the dead. Those marriages that looked dark and hopeless, I command them be resurrected from the dead in Jesus' name. Be made alive in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I command peace, resurrection life in your family, in your children. Come home. I call your children to come. I call your children, if they have not called you, to call you on the telephone and talk to you and be restored and reunited to you again in Jesus' name. I command these things and I rebuke the power of darkness in Jesus' name. I command life into you. Now you go out today and you walk in that resurrection life. You walk in that resurrection power of Jesus Christ. You say resurrection power is in me now. I have resurrection power. Everywhere I go, I am walking in resurrection power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I want to remind you that our next Victorious Faith Seminar is going to be in Colorado Springs. Yes, Colorado Springs, here we come. We've heard from you and we want to meet you. So we will be having our first seminar, which will be a healing service in Colorado Springs next Saturday, a week from tomorrow, Saturday, June 21st at 6.30 p.m. It will be held at the Comfort Suites on North Academy Boulevard. So that's basically at I-25 and North Academy Boulevard. Actually, when you exit south on Academy from I-25, it will be at the First Signal Kelly Johnson Boulevard, and you go west one block of Academy 
one block west of Academy on Kelly Johnson Boulevard. You'll see the comfort suites right there. And so this will be our next seminar next Saturday. It is a healing service. So if you need prayer or if you know someone who needs prayer, then come on out and join us in this service because we believe God is confirming his word with signs falling. We, we have already received wonderful testimonies of healings from the healing services that we've done in the Denver Tech Center and what we did in North Denver. We come together. We believe God together. We agree together in faith. We preach the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So together we are in corporate faith. Together we are believing God for healing. So this is your day to receive your healing. Also, this is Friday. I want to invite you. If you are blessed listening to these radio programs, if you are getting new revelation, if your faith is growing, if you are are maturing, if you are receiving anything from these radio programs, I encourage you to sow seed back into the radio program that is feeding you. And I encourage you to feed, uh, to sow seed into any ministry that feeds you because you, it, it is the biblical principles to sow into what feeds us. And so if this ministry is blessing you, I invite you to be a partner. Write to us at Victorious Faith, P.O. Box 1418, Castle Rock, Colorado, 80104. And I command the blessing on you. Be blessed, be fruitful, and multiply. And know that you are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.